Instrumental in combating the aliens is Michael Bean, and your work with James Cameron must be becoming a real workout for you. And the Terminator <laughs> and now this, this guy's making you jump through hoops, isn't he? <laughs> Absolutely. Actually, the, uh, believe it or not, I thought when I did the Terminator that I had, had probably worked on the toughest film physically that I would mm -hmm. ever work on, and then Aliens comes along, and it was much tougher because of all the armor that we wear, and it is so heavy. And these pulse rifles that we carry are so heavy. And when you do, we're crawling through elevator, I mean, uh, uh, air conditioning vents and, and over this and under that. And you're in deep crouches a lot of the yeah, time. Like, yeah, yeah, it was really tough, really tough. And if you do it once or twice, it's okay, but there are rehearsals and rehearsals, and then you do a take and another take and another take, and uh, uh, so you end up doing these things uh, over and over and over and over again. The apparatus, the effects, the machinery, Everything is so elaborate on this picture that I wish you would take me to the set and tell me just who was giving you orders, who was in charge. Jim Cameron was giving me orders, and Jim Cameron is in charge. Jim is not only wrote the script, wrote the script of the Terminator, you know, he designed the Terminator, he designed a lot of the hardware in this movie as far as the guns and the wardrobe, and uh, he worked with... Uh, uh, you know, the aliens themselves, and he's just, uh, he's just a very talented man. And, uh, but how uh, can one man continue to keep order out of such a complex system of production? I can't, I can't believe that anybody can uh, even uh, dream up the story that he dreamt up for aliens and, uh, and to have the, uh, the, the image and, and the idea to, to do this story and all the bits and pieces in it. Uh, there are a lot of people involved, and in any picture, it's always in a collaborative e effort. But uh, Jim is an amazing, an amazing director. T how about those moments on the set when those big things are in place? I mean, you're standing around for hours looking at those things. Yeah. <laughs> that give you the creeps after a while? I, you know, it's it's all sort of make believe. Those are life I, size, so yeah. To speak. There was there was one point in the movie, and there was one point that I, I kind of got the creeps, and it's it's when Hudson, the character of Hudson, is uh, um, is actually at one point gets has a close encounter of the alien kind, you know, and he's he kind of gets pulled down. I don't know if you remember that sequence, but uh, yeah, I remember down when we to the floor. Yeah, mm -hmm. I remember when we shot that. It was like. Ooh, that looks pretty nasty. And those yeah. things are dripping. I mean, we're, they were pumping all kinds of viscous fluids yeah. through them, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. So you must have felt after a day's shooting that you'd spent all day literally down in a sewer or something. Well, well, we had. I mean, after we finished up uh, a day shooting, we were filthy, filthy, and the armor was always pinching us, and there were little cuts and bruises, and it was. So you hit wild. the showers after a day like that, and what you spend do? another half an hour, you know, getting it all <laughs> off, and go home and go to bed so you can be up at six o'clock the next morning. Tell us about your relationship with James Cameron. Why have you been in both of his pictures? What about you has he conveyed to you that he likes? Well, you know, uh, when when I came in and met him on a purely uh, uh, average type of meeting for the Terminator, he was seeing people casting people. I came in, I had the script, my agent gave it to me, I read it, I liked it, I went and I read for him, he liked my reading. And he thought I, you know, personified the character that he imagined, Reese, better than any, any other actor in town that he saw. And uh, uh, we worked together, we had a great, uh, uh, a great relationship, you know, a give and take sort of relationship. You must be especially proud of that. It's not that you knew him or knew somebody else, but he liked what he saw, and that yeah. was enough. Well, that's, that's really the way that it usually happens. In films. Sometimes maybe we have the wrong idea. I Sometimes think so. we think it's who you know. Huh? Yeah, it isn't really who you know. I mean, it, who you know can help, a, as in Aliens. I mean, it's who I know, Jim Cameron, because I got that. I mean, he just called right. me up and but said, listen, we're doing Aliens. But it's because of the relationship that we had on the Terminator. And of course, the Terminator was such a fun uh, picture, and it was a successful picture. And uh, so there was a lot of good feeling between us. Michael, if you would, take us now as far from aliens as you can in your own acting career, either on the stage or elsewhere. Let's find a complete contrast to the Michael Bean we saw on screen. Uh, well, <laughs> serving tea <laughs> in a Chinese play or no, something. No, I did, uh, <laughs> I did uh, you know, theater as a child. When I was eight and 10 years old, I was, uh, you know, uh, Pinocchio in, mm -hmm. in, 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 in productions like that and Rags to Riches and Isn't Alice in Wonderland. We never hear about that side of an actor's development. We all know what it's like to be in the school play, but we don't think to say, well, Michael Bean must have been in a school play.
play. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. A lot of community theater when I was a child. Uh huh. Did that help, or was I think it? so? <laughs> I think so. I think it gave me a confidence of knowing that I could do it uh, at a very young age, and it's it's like playing sports or riding a bicycle. I think once you once you do it, you know you can at least you at least you can do it well enough that you won't embarrass yourself. Mm -hmm. And uh, so when I made a jump and went out to Los Angeles, I knew that I was somewhat capable. You know, so I think it helped. And you're in LA to stay now. This is this is your. I'd career. like. To, well, it's. I'd like to probably uh, live in another spot other than Los Angeles. But at the moment, I uh, I kind of have to be there because mm -hmm. that's where the film industry is. What's going to be Cameron's future projects, and will he continue now to work with you? Would you like that, or would you prefer to break away to other things? What? Well, Jim and I have worked in two films in three years. Mm -hmm. So I actually feel that uh, Jim will be making films for another 30 years, 40 years, wow. and uh, uh, whatever. I mean, he's 30, another 30 years, and so it wouldn't surprise me if we worked again. Uh, now, if that happens, would you be the lead? Would I be the lead? I'm thinking of Kurt Russell and John Carpenter, for example. Could it become that kind of a thing? Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't really know what you mean, the lead. Well, in other words, maybe you might have the role that Sigourney Weaver would have, not as a woman, obviously, but as the main male role. Uh, you would be the headliner, you know? I don't, I don't know. I mean, I would, I'm not interested in so much in playing the lead or playing like the above the title characters. Mm -hmm. I am in finding a role that is, uh, will make me stretch as an actor, you know, and make me work and, and, and do something different. Uh, anybody who can be on a set and have to imagine all of the effects that you must have been called upon to imagine throughout the shooting must be a heck of an actor. Right? There were times when he's saying, okay, now beyond that next turn or up on the ceiling, yeah. you're seeing whatever. That's true, but I, I feel that any time an actor is working in a scene, it's, it's make-believe. And it's, it, it's, you're, always, you're always concentrating and, and trying to find the truth. And if I'm doing a scene with you, you're, not, you're playing a character, and I'm believing your character. And uh, to me, it's, it's just as easy, as easy to work, not just as easy, but it can be just as easy to work with, with nothing there and use your own imagination or, or with an alien there as it is to work with another actor. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't really <laughs> see the big difference between... Might be between the same sometimes. <laughs> sometimes it's easier. <laughs> you know? Michael, one last thing. Um, if you were watching this film fresh or if you can remove yourself from it enough, would, would it scare you? Yeah, absolutely. Would this thing get to you? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And do you, are you Didn't making it scare any, you? You bet, but I'm asking you, any <laughs> okay. predictions about what this is going to do to the American public? Um, I, I just, that's all I can say is that uh, if you like The Terminator, you'll like this movie. If you liked Alien, you'll like this movie. If you like both those movies, it's out of this world. In the battle against the aliens, Michael Bean. Thank you. Thanks a lot. And from New York City for KCTV5, I'm John Tibbetts.